Hey everybody, PCB Junkie here. Yes, this is another RGB modding video, but this time around we have a fairly awesome Sony Trinitron XBR television. This is a 27 inch model and uh, the actual model number is uh, KV27XBR51. Uh, it's a fairly nice TV. Um, if you don't know much about the XBR line, it's apparently a uh, the top of the line uh, set of uh, Sony televisions um, where Sony put a lot of R&D and uh, quality design and also uh, just improved parts over the standard uh, consumer line that they were putting out at the time. So as a result these TVs were really really expensive when they when they came out and then they were mostly out of reach for the typical consumer and uh, this clearly shows uh, in this TV the, the plastics are quite uh, quite nice and, and firm um, at least in comparison to the other TV that I had uh, it has a uh, I'm not sure if this is an optional subwoofer but it has a, a a detachable subwoofer on the back and uh, one thing that I don't really like about this TV are these speakers but um, luckily they they can be removed they can just be um, unscrewed and and uh, pulled off and since I'm gonna be using this TV with a receiver um, I'm definitely gonna be taking them off because they they look quite silly uh, they don't really match uh, the rest of this TV I'm not sure what Sony was thinking with that design but anyway uh, the tube is quite nice the Image quality seems to be uh, really nice, and uh, I like the the thin bezel around the the tube. It's uh, makes this TV look uh, more like a monitor. In fact, uh, a lot like uh, a lot of the Sony PVM monitors that they were putting out at the time. So let's talk about why why I'm making this video. Um, well, if you um, if you had seen my last video where I um, tried to fix my uh, my older uh, Sony Trinitron RGB modded TV you, you probably know that uh, it started to give me uh, a lot of trouble and then uh, when I tried to fix it it just basically uh, died and uh, while I don't know if it's my fault or if the TV just simply died um, I decided to to stop working on it and just uh, get something better instead and uh, uh, as a result, I ended up getting this TV. It, w it wasn't expensive at all. Uh, I just paid uh, $20. Uh, and uh, the guy that was selling it, he really didn't want uh, didn't want to uh, sell it for that price. But um, I, I kind of talked him into it. Uh, you know, there's basically no market for this TV um, at all. And uh, I think it was probably posted on Kijiji for close to a month. And, uh, you know, I just kind of jumped, jumped on it. Uh, since I still need a TV uh, like this for for some arcade gaming and some retro gaming, also for some of the projects that I'm working on. So, so that's uh, that's one of the main reasons I got this. Uh, the second reason, uh, a fairly important reason, is uh, because according to the data sheet uh, and the service manual, uh, this TV is going to be fairly easy to RGB mod. So. Um, those are the main reasons, and like I said, this is a this is a really nice TV. It's it's uh, probably worth keeping um, long term, unlike the uh, the last one that I had. So um, that's why we're gonna be uh, uh, RGB modding this one. Let's look at the uh, schematics, and uh, I'll show you exactly what I think needs to be done, and then uh, we'll open it up and see if we can get this uh, TV working with RGB inputs. Uh, and uh, according to what I see in the data sheet, it uh, Shouldn't take long at all. Here's the service manual for this television. The model that I have is the one on the left, KV27XBR51. And there seems to be also a, a somewhat improved version of this TV with the model number 27XBR55. They both appear to be the same TV. Both uh, come with the silly side speakers and also with the subwoofer which I originally thought was an option but uh, doesn't appear to be so it uh, came with the package by the looks of it uh, they both have the same tuner the same tube three video inputs uh, either component sorry composite or as video which is quite nice for a TV from that period and there's also a monitor output again either 
composite or as video. The KV 27 XBR 55 is a little bit heavier not sure what the extra weight is um, and also it seems to come with uh, a different remote control uh, by the looks of it probably a somewhat improved version of what the XBR 51 gets and beyond that there are only a couple of additional notes uh, in the schematics that talk about the, the differences between the two TVs so Let's just uh, jump directly to that and can talk about that briefly and also we can talk about what needs to be done in order to modify this TV for RGB inputs. If we look at the block diagram, we can see that IC301, the YC Jungle chip, has two distinct RGB inputs. There's this one right here, which is connected to IC101 control which uh, I'm assuming is the main brain of this television now if I were to guess I would say that this RGB input is used to receive the on-screen display information uh, which is then going to be mixed uh, with the rest of the video uh, from the other input and uh, displayed on screen there's also a second RGB input right here and if we trace back, we can see that this originates from this connector right here, the F connector from board P. And uh, the note says that it's a 27XBR55 function only, which is quite interesting. So I'm assuming that this TV still has this connector, maybe a, a header, uh, which we'll be able to use to feed our signal into and as you can see all the inputs are actually here we have our RGB we have the sync and we have the YS signal which is uh, typically used to select between the various inputs that are being fed into the YC jungle so by modifying um, the state of this YS line we should be able to hopefully select this RGB input which in this TV it seems to be unused now there's also a YC input as well which is the Luma and Chroma input and uh, I'm not going to trace that back but I assume that that comes from another video source uh, possibly one of the inputs from the back of the TV or maybe the tuner or what have you so we'll just ignore that and, and concentrate on this uh, second RGB input and we'll be able to hopefully attach our um, RGB connection to this header if it exists and uh, toggle that YS line and that should be all that would be required to get the TV to display RGB signals. But before we do that let's uh, jump to the P board and, and see exactly what this F connector is all about. And here's the P board which is uh, actually a tuner and a tuner control board. Now based on what I've been able to gather out of this block diagram is that uh, the output of the tuner is actually a component type signal and that component type signal goes out and uh, it gets fed into yet another board through this connector right here and this board is actually uh, where's the label yeah right there the the board itself is actually a uh, an MPX control board and uh, it does some additional functionality based on uh, what I'm seeing but um, to be honest with you I'm not uh, quite sure exactly what what this board is uh, is used for um, I guess there's some additional processing that gets applied uh, to the signal maybe some uh, text or who knows what but uh, the signal is then output um, out of this board and it gets sent uh, back into the tuner board through this connector right here and uh, that is all then fed into the RGB matrix which ends up going out to the YC jungle chip through that F connector so since uh, this seems to be a tuner signal and uh, nothing else um, I think it's pretty safe to just uh, simply disable it and uh, feed our external RGB signal in through this connector. 
so that's uh, that's the plan and as you can see we have all the control lines that we need uh, we have the YS line which will enable us to switch the YC jungle over to the uh, the RGB signal that will be feeding in through these pins and uh, I think we can just ignore everything else here since uh, we're not going to be needing um, any of the tuner functionality in this TV so that's the plan and uh, really um, based on the note from the previous diagram I'm not even sure exactly how much of this is actually populated so I guess the next step will be to just open this TV up and uh, have a look inside and based on that we can determine what the next steps are going to be. After a little bit of searching I located the F connector which is that uh, five pin box that you see right in the center of the screen and that's connected to the appropriate pins of uh, IC301 which is the YC jungle and um, if I look at the diagram here which I probably should have checked earlier we can see that the uh, boards V and P are not actually populated in this TV so I'm now expecting to see the connector right here either not populated or just uh, not connected so let's uh, let's have a look at inside the TV and see exactly whether that's true or not I finally opened this TV up and uh, while it's super dusty inside one thing that I noticed immediately is the amount of shielding around the tube and uh, now I understand why the TV is so heavy I mean this is really thick steel plate that's wrapped completely around the tube and I guess it prevents the magnetic field from messing up the colors on the tube itself it's uh, quite a nice feature but it uh, sure is heavy anyway uh, another quite uh, quite amazing thing about this TV is how shallow the tube is it's it's quite unreal I mean this is a quite a large tube it's 27 inches and um, as you can see it's, it's very big and yet the neck is just so shallow that's uh, that's quite nice uh, you can tell they put a lot of effort into this but strangely the back of the TV sticks out even more due to this uh, extra set of boards and the the control panel I mean the uh, input panel so not sure that was a uh, the right thing to do but um, anyway it's not uh, it's not a very deep TV at all so as far as the connector goes the F connector um, I tried to locate it and actually it's not very easy to spot uh, you cannot see it from here but uh, you have to basically look between the boards and I'm gonna get a flashlight and I'm gonna see if I can pinpoint it but um, I'm try to zoom in as well it's that orange connector way in the back there and uh, as you can see it's not populated and uh, it's ready to be used so I'm going to uh, make a, a DuPont type connector and uh, apply the uh, proper test signal to this and see if we can get this TV just to accept RGB signals right away the next step now will be to mount the RGB input DIN socket and also the switch which will toggle uh, the TV between a regular video and RGB video. Now I don't really have that much real estate on this panel and uh, another problem is that the board that's um, back there prevents me from literally installing anything else in this space. So I think the best thing to do will be to simply remove these ports right here, these antenna inputs and uh, the box, the metal box right there where these are attached. I'm going to simply move this one off to the side, tie it somehow back here and then use a little bit of a coaxial cable to um, attach to a female to female um, RJ49 I believe this is just to keep one of the VHF UHF ports intact because chances are I may be using this TV for an older console which uh, only has uh, uh, antenna output and then uh, once that box is removed I'm gonna have these two spaces right here to install the 
DIN socket for the RGB inputs and the switch right here. So that is the plan and uh, um, I'm gonna go ahead and drill some holes and install those uh, ports and switches and uh, I'll come back and show you how that looks. I was able to remove a couple of the other boards uh, from around this area, unplug this one from back here and then uh, move the uh, tuner box out of the way. Now I have uh, pretty good access to the uh, five pin header right there and uh, that's where we're going to be attaching our RGB signals. Then here's the plug that I made that will plug into the five pin RGB connector that I just showed you. Now all this is is just a, a DuPont plug, um, a five pin DuPont plug, not entirely compatible with the um, connector that Sony uses but um, the spacing is, is quite correct and uh, this plug fits in that space and sits there um, tightly so uh, there shouldn't be any issues with uh, the actual connection. Now on top of this we have three 75 ohm resistors for each color so as you can see every one of these um, wires, these RGB wires is terminated to ground through these resistors and then each of the colors is passed through um, with these three series capacitors to the appropriate pin of, of the connector. In addition to that we have the white wire which is the YS wire which will allow us to switch the mode of the TV between RGB and uh, regular video and then uh, this leads to the other side of the connector which is a standard DIN plug that I normally use for RGB and uh, the YS wire is uh, going to be attached to a switch and then the orange wire is our sink and uh, the sink doesn't actually go to that five five connector plug because um, well, um, sync is not actually, not actually on this plug. So the sync is going to be wired to another location. I'm not exactly sure where I'm going to be attaching it to. Either maybe one of the video inputs or um, there's another plug which has a video signal line that's available and it, and it is unused. But uh, I'm not sure whether um, feeding the sync into that plug will work. So have to experiment a little bit and um, take it from there. I have the plug plugged in and I fed the TV a signal and I'm trying to switch the TV to RGB via this uh, YS cable and no matter what I do it's not happening. The TV is simply stuck in video mode. I have a bad feeling about this and I, I think I'm starting to understand what's going on. Um, I tried a number of things here. Uh, well, first let me tell you what I think is happening. So, as you saw in the service manual, this TV is actually meant for, um, or, or this chassis is, is meant to be used for two different models. The 51 model, which is what I have, and the 55 model. and. Uh, by looking at the service manual, the other boards, the P and the V board, are used for what appears to be picture in picture. So what's actually happening is that that 55 TV has a different tuner which outputs RGB and that RGB is then fed through another board which scales the picture and then repositions it for picture in picture. And that video is then fed back through that connector into the YC jungle which is then mixed together with the rest of the video and that allows the TV to display uh, the two picture-in-picture -picture channels. This TV doesn't have that feature so I think what Sony ended up doing is they they actually went ahead and disabled this connector in software because uh, modifying the state of the YS line has simply no effect uh, I'll show you exactly um, why I think that um, by going through the service manual in a, in a second but uh, basically what I've tried doing is I tried to apply different voltages to that to that pin and also um, 
reprogram my Logitech uh, Harmony remote to um, be compatible with the Sony 55 model and I tried to force this TV into picture-in-picture -picture mode but uh, it's not responding so this TV definitely has a different firmware compared to the other model and I'm pretty certain that what they ended up doing is they just simply disabled that feature and that connector is pretty much unusable but I'm not gonna give up on this quite yet uh, I have a couple of tricks up my sleeve so what I'm gonna be doing is uh, just showing you the data sheet just to confirm everything and then I'm gonna show you my new plan of attack this is what I wanted to show you this RGB register has uh, various values um, for the YC jungle settings, the, RG the RGB connector settings. Now, mind you, this data sheet that I have in front of me is not for the exact uh, YC jungle chip, but uh, I'm assuming a lot of the Sony ones will probably behave in the exact same manner. And uh, even this one has a very similar pinout, so uh, I'm, I'm almost certain um, that the functionality is uh, identical. But have a look at this here. As you can see, there are four, or actually three, possible combinations. And um, if this register, oh, by the way, this is a I squared C or I two C uh, communication uh, protocol info from from the data sheet. So. Um, as the TV is initializing, basically, it um, it sends a bunch of uh, uh, settings to the to the jungle chip, and uh, one of those settings is uh, is this uh, because when the chip is uh, started, it, it has no settings. Um, I proved that by unplugging the I squared C lines from the chip, and uh, basically the TV doesn't come up at all. So I know for a fact it has to be initialized, and uh, the TV must be setting this. Uh, at uh, initialize time or possibly just uh, every so often but anyway let's uh, let's talk about this uh, in detail so as you can see there are three different settings we have a zero zero uh, in this register and that um, sets the TV to external RGB inputs right which is pin 16 through 18 which is exactly the same as we have with uh, the jungle that's used in this model and uh, if those settings are zero, 0, then the TV can be switched by the YS line, pin 15, exactly the same as what we have. If the setting is one zero, then this TV is forced to use the external RGB input. But if it's anything else and one, then the TV uses video. So that is a, that's very, important clue in my opinion and I think this is exactly what's happening so uh, this firmware of the TV for this model simply initializes this to the uh, 0 1 or 1 1 and uh, it forces this to just be strictly TV without the ability to switch the YS line so what I'm gonna be doing now is I'm gonna hook up a uh, bus pirate and I just have that handy. I bought it a long time ago. Pretty much never used it. But uh, this is uh, going to be a great opportunity to, uh, to get that uh, thing out of the drawer and uh, put it to some use. So I'm going to hook this uh, thing up and I'm going to spy on the communication to this chip. And we're going to watch for this, um, for these values to be set and see what the TV is actually doing. So a little bit more information on this one if I scroll back up the registers that are actually used here are as follows so the TV is using two registers it seems like a receiver and a transmitter an 88 and an 89 hex and then our RGB values are actually part of another sub register right here Right, so those are the two bits of this main of this other register which has a bunch of other information there as well so we're gonna watch for 1100 and 88 or 89 okay so I'm gonna hook up the bus pirate and we're gonna watch to see if any of this is set so this is actually 0c hex so 88 and 0c hex and then 
something something one one or zero one all right so let's hook up the bus pirate and have a look okay so what I ended up doing is uh, basically interfacing to the I squared C line these two wires right here which uh, conveniently end with a plug the plug normally plugs into that uh, space right there but uh, what I've done is basically I, I just tapped it and I have one end going to the to the plug and the other end going to the bus pirate right here and uh, of course I have a ground attached that's the blue wire right there and I'm going to connect this guy to my PC and we're gonna have a look at the communication okay got the bus pirate uh, connected to the laptop now and uh, the terminal is configured and up and running yep and uh, let's uh, first configure the bus pirate for I squared C mode uh, let's see okay so that's M It's four, and the speed should be 100k, so that's three. Okay, and it's ready. All right, there's a sniffer here, which um, is, I think it's set by the macro. Let's see that. Right, so that's two. Sorry, I'm typing with one hand. Okay, there we go. All right, so let's uh, let's power on the TV and see exactly uh, what the communication looks like and um, whether we can make any sense out of out of any of this. Okay. So I'm going to power it on now and then we'll, we'll run it for a few seconds and then turn it off. Okay. Alright, so we have something. Okay, I'm going to stop it now. Wow, that's a lot actually. Yeah. It's going to be fun going through all this. Alright, let's, uh, let's go up to the top and uh, see if it makes any sense at all. So we're at the top. Okay, we were at the top. Okay, so nothing here. A little bit of communication there. Uh, okay. Right, so this is starting to look like what we saw in the data sheet. So we have that 88 and OE. Okay, so that, that's not what we're interested in. This is a 40. Not sure what that is. We have 88. So we're looking for 88 and C. 0C, I believe uh, it was. Okay, let's see. Um, don't see it. Oh, right there. Okay, so we have 88, 0C, and C5. Okay, so C, oh, there's some other information beyond that, hmm. But, uh, okay, so 88, 0, C, and C5. So 5 means that the last bit of that RGB register is set. So, if I'm not mistaken, 0, 1, or 1, 1 meant that the TV was forced into RGB mode. So that... If I'm not mistaken, that actually confirms, I think, what uh, what we were seeing in the in the data sheet. Okay, so well, um, let me have a look at this, and I'll come back and and give you guys a little bit more information on this. But uh, it certainly looks like the communication is working. We see a lot of the codes that we're expecting to see. I'm just going to go through this in a little bit more detail, and uh, hopefully find something else of interest. Alright, so 
unfortunately there's some bad news here um, it appears that the TV is just spamming the same codes over and over and this is not just an initialization thing it uh, it continues to push these codes to the YC jungle um, the whole time that it's on so we're not going to be able to just set this and forget it um, because the TV will just revert back to what it was uh, uh, what it needed before but anyway, uh, I think, uh, well, anyway, let me let me show you here first. Okay, so we have a 880C, then there's another one right here, 880C, C5. It's the same, it's the same stuff, right? It's just, it's being recent. And then there's, uh, there's another one here somewhere. Where did I see it? Um, uh, it's stuff looking at the camera and also trying to find some stuff. But yeah, anyway, it's, uh, it's here somewhere. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Well, you're going to have to take my word for it. Ah, right there. Okay? As you can see, it's the same set of codes being sent. So, there's actually no way to just uh, change this and then leave it. Uh, we're going to have to get a little bit more creative in order for this code to be overridden with something else. I have an idea and it, I think it'll work pretty well but first just let, let's just make sure that this is even the right thing okay so uh, I'm going to um, turn the TV back on and I'm going to set it on uh, tuner and then I'm going to modify this value and uh, watch what happens to the screen okay and if uh, if this changes uh, basically I'll just flip the last bit so instead of C5 I'll make it C4 and that will uh, change the last bit and put put the TV into um, the YS select and that should change the tuner screen to either black or, or something else but anyway let's uh, let's see what happens so let's let's confirm that this is actually uh, exactly what it is that we're looking for alrighty so I'm back in the I squared C prompt and uh, I'm going to write the value for that uh, register I'm going to try to overwrite it so it was 0x88 then 0x0c and then what was it uh, c4 right 0x c4 okay so if I do this that should flip that register at least temporarily until the TV uh, microcontroller the, the main brain decides to overwrite that value but um, as you can see here, the TV is still facing away from me, but I have a little monitor that I'm using as a mirror. So when we do this right, we should be able to see a change to the screen. Okay, I'm not sure anything happened there. Actually, yeah, it did. Okay, the screen just went blank for a second. Okay, so let me show you. All right, here it is. I don't know if you can see it, it'll be quick. Oh. I'm not sure if it's actually showing on camera at all. Yeah, did you see that? It's very, very fast. Like it's, yep, it switches it back super quick. So this is correct. So this is exactly what it is that we need to do. We just need to flip those two bits and um, that'll put the TV in the correct mode. So uh, now my plan will be to uh, do a little bit of uh, coding. I'm going to take an Arduino and uh, I think what I'm gonna what I'm going to do is I'm I'm going to um, connect the Arduino to the two lines, and I'm going to tell it to watch for that code, and when it sees that 880C and then whatever after, I'm going to bring those two lines down um, for the two bits that um, that are being sent, and that will force the TV to receive, or it'll force the YC Jungle to receive. The last two bits of that code as zeros and that will or should at least um, just basically intercept that code and change it um, there's really no other way to do this because this is by by directional communication so I can't put anything in the middle that even knows I squared C uh, it'll just complicate things so I think the best thing is just to just to um, override that code as it's flying across the wires and just bid bang everything. 
as I was working on the Arduino mod chip uh, for this TV that would modify the uh, data coming across the I squared C lines, I noticed that we have a ROM in this uh, diagram. Now, of course, a ROM would uh, most likely contain the configuration settings for this TV. So uh, I decided it may be a good idea to pull it out and try to read its contents. I wasn't sure at the time whether I was able to read it uh, with the equipment that I have, but uh, uh, it turns out I was. Now, let's follow this ROM and see exactly where it's connected. So the lines go out through this connector and they end up going back out through here to a another board which has a microcontroller a Sony a proprietary Sony microcontroller and it's one of the main controllers of this board that's uh, the fun functionality for this board is uh, noted right there it's the T board now this controller ends up reading the configuration parameters from that ROM and then the these pins right here, another I squared C bus, its output actually goes across here and then it ends up being connected to the YC jungle chip. So chances are the data for the configuration of this TV actually resides in there. So it's quite plausible that we can uh, change the contents of this ROM and then uh, re-enable the RGB port through here. So let me show you exactly uh, what I ended up doing with the ROM and uh, where it's located and uh, we'll talk about the contents of the ROM itself and uh, what we can do about the, the configuration within. The ROM is actually that 8-pin chip uh, way in the back there and um, I took it out and I put a socket uh, in its place and I'm able now to pull this ROM in and out and uh, this allows me to read the contents and reprogram it. So now let me show you exactly what I found within the the data that's contained within that ROM and then uh, talk about the uh, various ways that we can modify that and uh, maybe get that TV to accept the RGB signal or enable that RGB port uh, by overriding the contents of this ROM. After pulling out this ROM and uh, dumping the contents, it became very clear where that uh, setting for the um, blue cutoff and also for the RGB bits uh, was. It's the only value here within this dump that is C5, so it was pretty easy to spot. Now, I read this uh, ROM with a TL866 Universal Programmer, which is uh, quite a nice little device and uh, seems very inexpensive. And it's able to read these uh, ROMs. And, and this one is uh, an ST24CO2, by the way. So, I suspected that the value uh, for the RGB setting and also the blue cutoff as uh, described by the data sheet, the YC Jungle data sheet. <clears throat> as you remember, this was the 0C sub-register, which had uh, four bits for the blue cutoff and also the last two bits were the RGB lines. So, um, like I said, it was pretty easy to spot that value, but um, to prove that uh, this was indeed the place where the setting was stored, I ended up doing a couple things. Uh, first, I went to the service menu and I changed the blue cutoff, which was uh, a C at the time, and I, I simply changed it to A. And um, I did two things after that. First, I dumped the ROM again, and sure enough, the C actually changed to an A. Second thing I did was I hooked up the bus pirate and I look at the the setting flying across the, the two wires uh, as the TV was booting up and I saw that the 880C C5 value that we saw before changed to uh, 880C A5. And in fact, uh, the, the bytes that follow were 
also present in that message. So that made it super, super clear that it's it's this byte right here. So I then proceeded to change the five to a four and uh, I was thinking maybe that will be enough to re-enable that RGB port, but unfortunately I was mistaken and uh, let me show you why exactly. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to change this uh, C5 value to something a little bit more recognizable and unique. Um, and uh, when we put this ROM back into the TV and power it on, we're going to see um, the value reflected in the I squared C communication during the configuration. Um, so let's uh, change this to, um, let's say an A, maybe A0, right? So that will um, reset the last two bits and then uh, it'll also reset the die call bit, whatever that is. Uh, but uh, anyway, so since we're just testing, let's uh, let's do that. So I'm going to write this ROM uh, back to the chip and then uh, we'll plug it back into the TV and watch the communication, see what happens with it. Okay, so that's done. Let's, uh, let's plug this into the TV now. Okay, I got the I squared C sniffer running on the bus part and the bus parts connected to the TV and I installed the uh, ROM chip back into its socket so let's power this TV on now and uh, see exactly what kind of message we get now with the modified value inside of the ROM. Okay so I'm gonna stop it right here and the message we're looking for is the same as we saw in the past it's actually right here. Uh, just waiting for the camera to zoom in on it. Alright, so we have 880C and A1. So, as you saw, um, the value in the ROM was actually A0. And uh, during the communication, the last bit was flipped to A1. So, that overwrites pretty much anything you put into that uh, EEPROM, unfortunately. And uh, it prevents uh, us from permanently changing the RGB port uh, enabled value uh, inside of the ROM. So really the only solution that I see right now, uh, the only possible solution to make this work is uh, a mod chip that would um, watch the I squared C communication and then modify the bits as they fly across the wires. All right, I'm finally getting somewhere with this. Let me show you what I got and uh, what's happening. So I have the um, I squared C communication tapped and it's going into a MSP430 launchpad. Uh, I know this is not an Arduino. Um, there's a reason for this. We'll talk about that in a second, but I have here a super gun that I built recently and also a, uh, a board, the arcade PCB that I got recently. It's a uh, rally bike. Uh, I really like this game. So uh, since I got it recently, I figured uh, why not hook this up and test with this board. Uh, just to give, give you guys a little bit more uh, visual information as far as image quality goes, uh, the test board is, is kind of boring. So uh, this is just, uh, I think, a better option. So let's jump to the front and I'll show you exactly what the picture now looks like. So as you can see, um, the RGB video is enabled and the picture quality is excellent on this TV. It really is. Um, there's not too many convergence issues like I had with the, with the other ones and the pixels are absolutely crisp. I mean, they're, they're super sharp and uh, I really like the uh, 240p interlace. Uh, effect that this TV produces, the nice scan lines. Um, game looks really, really good. Uh, yeah, excuse the flickering, that's uh, not actually on the screen. All right, so let's talk about how I actually got to this point. Uh, I have to say it was quite an ordeal. So initially, I started to develop uh, the code to interface um, 
to the I squared C uh, communication and modify the bits as they fly across. And uh, I developed that on the Arduino platform. I had it working with the Bus Pirate maybe 99% of the time, but um, that 1% of the time uh, I just couldn't. I couldn't fix. I, I tried numerous things. I spent uh, quite a lot of time on that, and um, I came to the conclusion that uh, the Arduino just isn't fast enough. What was worse is when I hooked this up to uh, to the TV. When I hooked that Arduino up to the TV, the Arduino wasn't able to see anything, and. Um, well, the reason is the timing in the TV is a lot more aggressive than uh, than it was on the Bus Pirate. Since the Arduino has uh, no debugging facilities, I mean, it does have serial, but the serial is, um, you know, 115 uh, baud, and uh, the, the communication here is 100K, and there's just no way to properly um, send out the information from what's actually happening within the process. Uh, through serial for debugging, so it was almost like a, a lost cause. I was working blind; I couldn't really get uh, much information out. And uh, since the code wasn't all that complex, I decided um, at first to put it on the MSP430. And uh, when I had it on the MSP430, I was able to see a lot more due to its uh, much uh, improved debugging function. And uh, I actually got it to work 100% with the Bus Pirate. But when I hooked that uh, launch pad, this MSP430 launch pad to the TV, again, I was getting absolutely nothing. It wasn't recognizing anything. It was losing bits left and right. Um, the reason for that is, uh, well, let me just show you. So here's the scope. And uh, this is the I squared C communication. So on top, we have the clock data. And on the bottom, we have the actual data bits, right? I coded this to use interrupts. It's um, it's just the, I guess, best practice. So what ends up happening is um, this clock pulse, right, from edge to edge, especially this upper portion, that's about, uh, what is that? That would be, I think, like about four microseconds. And this is a 16 megahertz processor. So that's very little time to do any work here. And um, what was happening is, um, I'm just gonna scroll to uh, an area which has a little bit more info for data. What was happening is an interrupt was being fired for data and as the work was being performed within the interrupt service routine another interrupt would be fired for clock and as you can see these are almost simultaneous i mean it they almost overlap so as this was happening these interrupts were just simply being lost because the work was still being performed and the microcontroller wasn't able to determine whether there was a change in the state of these lines or not took a break, I figured maybe I should uh, use a, a faster microcontroller. But then I, uh, I decided on another approach. Instead of using interrupts, I decided to just brute force this in a loop. Um, and I would just keep track of the state for each change uh, manually inside of a loop. And uh, that worked a hell of a lot better. Um, so I was able to see the changes, even though they were somewhat delayed, I was still able to catch every single one of them. And that's basically where we are right now. So I have that MSP430 working using that approach. Uh, it's not the best code. It's not, um, I guess, the best practice of doing things, uh, but it's the only way that I could get it to work with a slow microcontroller. Another thing that I did was I I simplified this code a lot. So initially I developed almost like a I squared C library. You know, that library was kind of complex and it really didn't need to be. We're just trying to modify bits as they're, as they're flying across, right? So the, remember the last two bits or the last bit of that message is a one and we just need to bring it down. Well, I couldn't really use any built-in libraries or any hardware to do this because the way the hardware or the libraries work, they, they use a 
um, I guess a message system so a message has to be completed before you do anything else and what we're trying to do here is we're trying to intercept the message and modify it as it's coming down the wire so there was really no way to use a library and it had to be brute forced uh, bit banged in a loop and that's pretty much where I ended up because I want you guys to be able to reuse this I think the best platform is still the Arduino it's a five volt platform uh, it's fairly accessible uh, to everybody so I think I'm gonna port the code to the Arduino next and uh, see where that uh, takes me okay so uh, I'll come back and I'll show you the results uh, of the Arduino uh, code and hopefully I get that running uh, nothing uh, seems to be going well with uh, with this project so now that I put the MSP430 code back um, on the Arduino um, it's not performing as well as it did um, on the other MCU um, that light uh, the LED that you see blinking it blinks whenever that code is encountered and um, the blinking is supposed to be very consistent that, that code flies by at a very predictable interval and as you can see um, the blinking doesn't reflect that and of course as a result now when we look at the screen um, since the code is not detected 100% of the time uh, it passes through unmolested and um, uh, hits the YC jungle which then shuts off the RGB port until of course the next time um, the code flies through and it, it's re-enabled again so it's uh, it's well it's not gonna work um, like this right this is obviously not uh, not good enough I found something really interesting when uh, working with the Arduino code I put in a, um, a bit toggle one of the pins toggles whenever the loop um, is entered and uh, as you can see this happens often enough that uh, in the majority of cases there's enough events or enough loop events happening within each pulse of the clock to do enough of the work but every so often there's this and uh, I'm not sure what's going on here but basically it looks like the Arduino is asleep for a moment and certainly I mean that's long enough to uh, to miss bits as they change during the clock and data cycle so uh, I'm gonna dig into this a little bit deeper and, and try to find out what's going on but I don't think it's my code I'm wondering uh, is there anything else in the Arduino that could be causing it to uh, space out for a bit? So this is even more weird. I took out most of the code from the loop and it's, it's just basically a loop with a toggle and it's still happening. These, um, these pauses are still happening. What's going on Arduino? And here we are again with the MSP430. Unfortunately, I just wasn't able to get the Arduino working at all with this TV. Um, there seems to be actually something off with that platform and uh, I'm making a separate video on that if you want to check it out. The topic seems interesting enough that uh, it probably warrants its own video. But anyway, here we are and um, I have this thing running again and uh, it's running quite reliably. I made this little board out of a, a small round a prototyping board. Uh, the reason I picked this one is because it's just the smaller one I have with uh, mounting holes and uh, I'm going to mount this board right here off to the side so it can't be uh, too big. And uh, what I ended up doing is I just uh, I used the 3.3 volt regulator and uh, I have uh, a bit of an enhancement here. I'm using a, a transistor now to pull the um, the data line down for that uh, one bit that we need to bring down to enable the RGB port and uh, this method is uh, just a little bit safer than using the uh, um, the lines directly from the microcontroller to do the same thing and uh, makes the code just a, a tiny bit faster so it's um, it's a win-win in my opinion and uh, uh, it's been working quite reliably so far so I've had this running for probably a uh, few hours now and uh, there's absolutely no flicker on the screen and uh, as you can see the flashing LED is uh, flashing very consistently it's not missing any of those codes as they fly across 
So uh, there's uh, there are actually two LEDs here. The green one there it uh, lights up when uh, it sees valid uh, I squared C data, uh, just something for debugging. And uh, the green, uh, the red one here, is uh, uh, flashing whenever the code uh, for the RGB disable value uh, flies across and is being modified. So as we can see, it's uh, it's happening quite often and. Uh, it's uh, very consistent. So that's it. Uh, I'll be mounting this board, like I said, off to the side now. And then um, I guess uh, we're going to be wrapping this up soon. So uh, once I do that, uh, I'll show you exactly what the wiring looks like. And then uh, I'll show you um, the end result for this project. And uh, as far as this board goes, I'm thinking if there's a bit of a demand here, for this type of mod, I may just go ahead and make a few of these boards and um, make them available to you guys. Uh, maybe I'll have uh, like a, some sort of a kit, or maybe just a ready assemble board if uh, if there is demand, of course. Uh, and if not, I'll just make this um, this uh, design available uh, for you guys to download, and uh, you can make your own if you uh, if you feel like it and want to have a mod like this. Uh, I believe there's a number of Sony TVs that have a an RGB port that's uh, disabled, and uh, you know it would be uh, it would be I think ideal to uh, to have uh, an RGB mod that just re-enables an unused port. I think it's probably the the best way and the the cleanest solution for an RGB mod. And these Sony TVs are are quite awesome, so I think it's worthwhile to do. Anyway. Um, let me now just uh, tidy everything up and then I'll show you what the uh, what the completed wiring looks like. And now that everything is in its proper place, let me show you exactly what I did with the back panel and also the wiring inside of the TV. So here I mounted the 5-pin uh, DIN socket for the RGB input and uh, I have a toggle switch here. It toggles the YS line that selects between RGB video, the unused RGB port on the YC jungle, and the regular video input. So basically every every one of these ports work as expected with the uh, switch turned off. And if we want the uh, RGB video, we have to select the TV to video one and then um, have something plugged in here and the switch pushed in in order to select RGB input. And I kept the RF input as well. This is just a, a female to female jack, which uh, it connects then to the uh, tuner box via some uh, short cable. So that's the back panel. And now let's talk about the wiring itself. So here I have the RGB thin socket and the wires run through this little harness and they run down there to the YC Jungle board the main board really and uh, that connector as you can see is, is right there it's between that board I'm, I'm starting to put everything back so it's all crammed in there but uh, there it is you can see it so the R G and B lines as well as the Y S line go to that port sync on the other hand sync is soldered into you can see it right there it's soldered into the video one input and that's why I made a note here um, in order to have RGB video one must be selected there is a connector right there that has um, the sync pin on it as well and also a video pin so initially I thought maybe I could uh, run the video or the sync uh, line into the video pin but uh, it turns out I can't. It seems to be going into the right place, uh, into the right circuit, um, according to the uh, service manual. But it turns out that when I put the uh, sync in there, it uh, I can't get a I can't get a stable picture. I, I think what's happening either the uh, levels are off um, from the whatever the TV is expecting, or possibly. There is a secondary sync that's generated if there is no input. I think that may be required for the OSD to uh, function correctly. 
And I think that sink um, is just being mixed in with the sink that I um, I add to that port, and uh, it's just a mess basically. So I ended up doing the uh, the easiest thing possible, and I just literally soldered it to the video one input, and that's why we have to have video one enabled for the RGB to sync. Now the uh, let's talk about this board right here. So we have power. Um, just the uh, green and the white wire right there and that goes into the standby board right there for the 5 volts as you can see back there and uh, then these connectors are the I squared C communication lines this white plug originally went into that connector for the YC jungle but what I ended up doing is I I put the white plug in here and then I uh, literally tapped uh, into that communication line and then the output is going out through this cable and it ends up going into the same spot as before so I think that's it oh and of course we have the tuner box which is now safely tied back here and uh, the cable right there it's just a short coax cable that ends up going into that uh, uh, RF port on the back of the TV and I think that's it so that's basically the wiring most of the work of course ended up being in here coding this and building this li little um, interface board and of course a lot of it uh, was spent on trying to figure out exactly what's wrong so that's the majority of the work um, and uh, I wish this TV was a little bit simpler to mod but uh, it didn't turn out to be so but in the end, I still managed to get it working. So that's it, and uh, I'm gonna put everything back together and then uh, just uh, talk about a couple things before we wrap this video up. So as you can see, the TV's finally back together. I have hooked up to it my Supergun device and also an uh, IGS PGM gaming system. It's an arcade game system from uh, Taiwan. It's not really popular here in North America, but uh, I have it nonetheless and uh, I have plugged into it a game called uh, Oriental Legend. It's a, it's a Chinese developed uh, four player beat em up. Uh, not a great game but uh, still fun and uh, I just felt like playing it today so I'd figure I'd, I'd use it to demo the uh, quality of the image from the TV itself. In the back as you can see uh, behind the cover, the board that I installed is uh, running happily, modifying the uh, the code to disable the RGB input. That works quite well, and there hasn't been any issues with it uh, so far. I've been running it for about a day or so, and I also mounted the uh, speakers on the back of the TV. There's a second set of mount holes for those speakers, so now everything looks quite neat. It uh, actually looks more or less like a monitor. Okay, let's jump to the front and I'll show you what the picture quality looks like and then we can talk about a couple things before we wrap this video up. So as you can see, picture is pretty crisp. There are no issues, there, there are no, there's no flashing. Uh, everything looks nice and sharp. And uh, I really don't have uh, an issue with, uh, with this mod at all. Um, pretty happy with the way it turned out even though it took uh, a lot longer than I expected uh, initially I thought this was gonna be maybe a few hours worth of work but uh, with that RGB input disabled it ended up being several days of trying to figure things out uh, and uh, trying to undo the uh, the effort that uh, Sony went to to uh, keep that port uh, disabled so here we are everything works now let's uh, talk about um, this mod and uh, as it relates to other Sony TVs. So if you have a TV that has an RGB input, uh, it's unused according to the data sheet and uh, there's nothing plugged into it. Let's say it's a chassis that's used for several models as was the case here. And uh, you just happen to have the model where uh, nothing is plugged into that um, RGB header. I'm gonna say, most likely that header or that RGB input is disabled in software uh, and there's nothing you're going to be able to do to re-enable it just based on the lengths that Sony went through to um, keep that uh, input disabled in this TV I'm gonna I'm gonna say they probably did the exact same thing with 
with their other models. So the best thing would be, if you wanna keep this mod uh, simple, is get a TV, which has something already plugged into that header, like um, maybe a teletext board or a secondary tuner, or maybe a closed captioning board. And that would then allow you to just unplug whatever's plugged into that header and replace it uh, with uh, your own connector, feeding in your RGB signal into that port, into that header. And uh, that should be all. But if you already have a TV like this or you plan to get a TV um, like this, which has an RGB input um, that's not used, you can use the method that I showed you in this video to in fact enable that uh, uh, that input and uh, chances are that uh, the method that I use here will probably work on other Sony TVs. Uh, the data sheet um, um, wasn't for this uh, TV, uh, the, the YC Jungle data sheet wasn't for this chip and uh, it's uh, the exact same code so everything was matching. Uh, I, I believe that they use the same protocol in their other models and um, uh, you know, there may be uh, a compatibility across all different models of Sony TVs, or uh, quite a few maybe. And and if not, you know, um, we can probably find a way to modify the other models as well. So that's the main thing I would uh, I would say. Uh, it just uh, get a TV with um, a port that's uh, an RGB port that's already in use. And if not, you can use my method here to re-enable it. Of course, for this method here. I will try to make the code available for you guys. I will try to uh, make the design of the PCB available to you guys. And of course, I may be able to provide a, a ready-made board for you guys to purchase and, um, and install uh, in your own TV if there's enough demand. I'm not sure, we'll have to see, but um, um, you know, I'm gonna share the information obviously um, from this project and uh, let you guys do, uh, do your mods uh, this way because I find that there's probably a number of these Sony TVs uh, that can be modified and uh, it's kind of a wasted opportunity if, if, if you just trash a TV like that that uh, could take a little bit of effort and have RGB enabled. So this is gonna be it for this video. I hope the content here helps you with your own Sony RGB mod and if not that at least you found this uh, somewhat entertaining. If you do enjoy this type of content, please uh, consider subscribing or at least uh, giving me a like and uh, I will continue to make videos similar to this in the future. Okay, so like I said, this is going to be it and uh, I'll see you all on the next video. Bye everybody.